Automating a dropdown, also known as combo box with Power Automate desktop is straightforward. Here we go to amazon.com and in this dropdown, I want to extract all the elements so I can navigate through them afterward. If you don't have an example right now, please open up amazon.com and do this exercise with me. You will learn much faster. I navigate to Power Automate desktop. Here I need to create a new browser instance. So I find a launch new. I pick Microsoft Edge because that's my browser of choice. Feel free to pick Chrome and Firefox. This will work the same. Launch mode. We don't need to launch a new instance because we already have the web page open. So I'll say attach to running instance. Then I'll say I want to find the tab by title. I click this drop down and here you will see Amazon.com. The variables produced, that is a browser instance variable. Now we can refer to that variable when we want to automate the browser. Here I click save. This was basic. Now we need to create a selector for the drop down and this is done manual. So what you want to do is to go back to the browser with your drop down, go up here, right click, inspect, that will open up the developer tools. This is the code behind the website. And if your developer tools look like this over here to the right, just click these three buttons and say dock to button. Then you want to be sure you are in elements and to uh, make sure that we are with the drop down, we can click this element picker and I can see I can pick elements here. What you want to do is to find your drop down. This is a little wider than we thought that's because all the text that comes down. So when you see this, just click it and you can see that it highlighted down here in the code. What I want to do now is to create a stable selector that identified each one of these elements. Try to go down here to the select. Here you have it. We have all these options. We have uh, the element is called option for each one of these. We have some attributes with attributes values. And then we also have a text. And this is the exact text that we want out in the data table so we can iterate through them. So what we will do here is to uh, create a, an element for the selector. That could be this element here, select, and then we can use this attribute ID equals search drop down box. What we want to do here is to create a unique element that only exists here. So what we're telling is that uh, go to the select element and find the ID search drop down box that say something about the drop down box. Click the start, open up a notepad. It's much easier to do this with notepad. So what I want to do, I know it will start with select, then um, to have the attributes, I will have a hard bracket, and then I will find this attribute down here. Click two or three times on this, that will mark it. Control C to copy it. We go back to the notepad, control V here, and now we created the first element of our selector. So this is just saying, select that was the element and then we find a unique attribute with a value here so id is fairly unique usually the web developers choose id as a unique identifier hence the name then i have a space and i have a larger than and a space this is called a child combinator selector and that is how power automate desktop wants the selectors to be written in then i simply just need to say i want the option and that is the one thing that these have in common. So I can simply just say option and this is my selector. Control A, Control Z to mark it. Now we can use it in Power Automate Desktop. Minimize the notepad. Close down the developer tools. Sometimes also just refresh the web page so we know we have a fresh instance that will be when we automate things. Now we are from a blank uh, start and here I want to find and extract data from web page. I simply just uh, click here and here we can see we work in browser. And if I want this to work, I need to open up the browser. Sometimes it doesn't show up this live web helper, just move your browser a little bit around like this. And then you will see the live web helper. What I want to do here, I don't want to do anything on this website. I want to go to advanced settings. Here I want to click this drop down. I want to choose list and that is because I want a one dimensional list. I want each one of these departments as single values. I don't want to create a table because that will require me to have two values and I don't want that now. So I choose list. Our base selector, we just created that. So simply just say control V to paste it in. 
then we need an attribute and that attribute uh, is text. We want to say to Power Automate Desktop, we want to grab the text inside these elements. So here I just say own text. Now I'm done. I can click OK. And here you will see all the elements of the drop down is um, typed out. That was exactly what we wanted. Click finish, click save, and let's try to run it. We're still not uh, true yet, but we just want to see that this works. This will take very uh, short. If I go back here, what you want to see is over here to the right in flow variables. If this doesn't show up, it will look like this. Simply just click the X in the corner. It will say 28 rows and one columns. I can open it. And here you can see we have a data table called data from web page. And here we have all the results. Let's try to iterate to them. First of all, we might need to change this data from web page um, because it could say something like data from drop down just, just to uh, create a better name. That is best practice. The functionality will be the same. So now I'll just say data from drop down. And that's just to make easier to maintain these flows. So here I want a for each. So now I want to iterate through all this data from the drop down. So I find a for each. And here the value to iterate that will be the data from the drop down. So I can click this X here, say data from drop down. Then I can store it into uh, something. And that will be something that says something about the data. And that will be current department. Again, this is optional. But I recommend that you do these things, implement them, because your flows will get a lot better. So keep good naming of your variables. And if you want more best practices, please click this video up in the right corner. That is a two hour guide taking you to all the best practices in Power Automate Desktop. So here I click Save. Now I'm iterating to them. Let's say that I want to pick these in the drop down or combo box, also known as. I go up to Actions and then I find a set drop down list value, choose the one on the web form filling, drag it in into the for each. So now I just want to say I want to work in this browser. And then I want to say, uh, what is the UI element, I click this drop down, I add the UI element, go up and find the drop down, press control. And I don't want to clear all options. What I want, let me move this a little bit down. I want to select the options by name because I'm iterating through each name here in the for each and in the current department, the current name is stored. So here I can just say I want the uh, current department, I double click here, and then I can go in here, I can either say zero as an index, that will be the column, or I can choose results, because that was the header. So zero or results, that's it. Now I can click save here. Let's try to test it. What I want to see is that um, we pick each element in this drop down. You can see now we are iterating through. We could find put in more things in our for each. Now you want to navigate to this two hour best practices guide. Yes, it will take you to everything, logs, error handling, creating the best flows so that you can be a better power to make desktop developer.